Managing in Scotland is extremely difficult. Nobody told me it was going to be this hard. I cannot sell anyone and I cannot buy anyone. And all that seems to happen is I keep going outside of the wage budget allowance. I even tried to sign Joey Dawson as an emergency backup, but he wanted too much money and he was outside the wage cap set by the board. So I had to walk away from the negotiations. But I did sign one player. The fans don't rate him though, and quite frankly neither do I. But I just need someone capable of standing somewhere in midfield. It doesn't matter whether he can play or not. I just need to fill the squad up. Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome back to The Road to Glory, Part 43, Season 5, here at Livingston. And yes, it has been an absolute nightmare of a transfer window. We cannot sell anyone and therefore we cannot buy anyone. And part of the problem that this club has, like most of the other clubs in the Premiership here, is that they do have a massive debt and they are £372,845 in debt and they do have a transfer debt of 24000 Nothing to do with me of course and this is just stuff that I've picked up since I've arrived and that means that they are totally unable to put any money into the financial pot at all and this makes it very very difficult of course to do business in the transfer market and if you can't sell players then you are not going to have any money or any wage budget with which to play with and all I seem to be doing is falling into this trap where I'm always going over the wage budget. I tried to sign Joey Dawson. He's just a backup striker at Elgin and he's not very good but the wage cap was ridiculous. He wanted a thousand pounds a week and the board said no, no more than 450 pounds a week and of course negotiations broke down completely and in terms of what has happened, what limited things have happened in the transfer window. We have agreed to let go Joe Adams and Joshua Coyote at the end of their contracts and Adams will leave the club on the 9th of June and join Ross County and Coyote will join Falkirk on the same day and we got nothing in compensation from them. They just wanted to run down their contract and they're going to do that. And what has happened in real terms now, we've had to let go Sanchez Saldana. He was very unhappy with his playing time and so we've let him go to Rochester on loan. He was starting to whinge a lot and it was bringing the whole morale of the squad down and so he's gone out on loan quite happily to Rochester and then the only thing that I could do with all the players leaving and not being able to bring people in the only thing I could do was to bring in Cole McKinnon a midfielder from Rangers and the fans are not happy about this transfer and quite frankly I'm not very happy at all either and if we look through his attributes his first touch of nine He's got. He's very poor in the air. He doesn't anticipate situations very well. He's not brave. He doesn't make very good decisions. And of course, he's not very determined to go with it. And uh, he doesn't work very hard. He doesn't have any pace and he's not very agile. And he's not very strong and can't last a match. But... Apart from that, I don't think he's all that bad. So we've brought him in anyway, and as long as he can stand somewhere around there, then that will do for me. That's all we can afford, and that's all we can actually bring in. And we are in serious trouble as we go into the second half of the season. But somehow on the pitch we have managed to do very well and we are still in second although Rangers have gone joint second with us. They are third on goal difference alone and we have 51 points from 24 games and if you'd offered me that at the start of the season I'd have bitten your hand off for it. And when you were last here, you saw us beating Falkirk by three goals to one and then we followed that with an equally good victory by two goals to one at home to Aberdeen. And then we played in the Scottish Cup fourth round against a club called Spartans. Now, I don't actually even know who they are. They're in the Lowland League and they don't seem to play a lot of games. They actually have only played six games all season. But we managed to run out quite comfortable winners against them by four goals to nil. But then unfortunately we came unstuck against Celtic who were just at the end of the day too good for us 
but Bruce Anderson did score again in that game. So we have high hopes of Bruce Anderson as we move into the second part of the season. Now there are only nine games to go and I think what actually happens is that the division will actually split into two and then what will happen in the champions group is that everybody will play each other once. Five games, teams play each other once and then after they've played each other once the top five will qualify for the European competitions and the team finishing in sixth will be the bridesmaid and get nothing. So I think that's how it's going to work. We'll play out the last nine games which will take us up to 33 games and then we'll play another five games taking us up to 38 games for the season and then the top five will be decided in kind of a playoff league between one and six. I'm hoping that we're going to be good enough to finish in either fourth or fifth and I'll be very happy actually if we can do that. And our two games today are Dundee United away and we will play Hearts at home and they're two difficult games. Dundee United who you can see are bottom of the league and you know we always struggle against bottom of the league teams and Hearts are sitting in fourth place and this will be a good test for us to see if we will be capable of finishing in the top four or five when the championship group games begin. So Hearts is a very good test for us and Dundee United is always going to be a potential banana skin. And so we have two very difficult games to play. Let's go and kick some balls. And so the team for today against Dundee United is Bentley in goal with Ben, Fitzwater, Boyle and Penrith at the back. Omeonga, Sweet and Bowden in midfield, Moylan, Nubel and Anderson will play up front. They are going to play with a low block because they are a very defensive unit. We're going to try and drag them out from and and we're going to try and drag them out from the back by using the low block. This is the team that we beat 8-1 not so long ago. And I'm hoping that today we can just go out there and repeat that performance. But I'm pretty sure, as everybody will know, we are not going to beat them 8-1 again. I'm going to tell them we are favourites. I'm expecting good defensive performance, a good midfield performance, and I'm expecting to see top quality finishing as well. And hopefully we can go out there, win this game, and maybe Rangers will drop some points against Aberdeen, but Rangers are already a goal ahead, so that's maybe not going to happen, and they have gone above us. And so we do need to win this game. And it is, though, Dundee United who've made the better start, but we are coming into the game a little bit more. And it's very, very close, and there is a goal kick, and we do have a highlight, and Bentley fires the ball upfield, and it has been won in the air by Livingston, and it comes out to Nuble. Nuble on the right wing. He plays inside to Ben, Ben to Omeenga. And we do need to get a goal here. Okay, let's get a goal before half time. Let's settle all the nerves down. And here is Bentley again. He's just playing it very bad. We don't seem to be very direct at the moment. And I want us to be a little bit quicker moving the ball from back to front. But this is not happening. And maybe I need to tell them to be a little bit more disciplined about what they're doing. Here is Moylan, though, on the left. He's looking to get a cross in. Can he get a cross in? It's too long, but Nubel has picked it up on the right-hand side. Forced wide. It's into Ben. Ben, who looks inside for Bowen. And Bowen has found Nubel. And Nubel has scored. We are a goal ahead and we should go back into second now above Rangers and that is a relief. It didn't seem that we were going to get the goal. Dundee United have been as good as we are and it's a fairly even contest but we've managed to get one ahead. Bowden found Nuble in acres of space. Nobody picked him up and it was very, very easy for him to put that in the back of the net. And we maybe now need to just consolidate and make sure we win this game. And we do have a free kick and it is Penrith to fire in the free kick to the far post. I'm not quite sure if that was a save or not, but it has been deflected. A shot from Sweet has gone in via a deflection 
And now Dundee United are in trouble. They've got a lot to do. They're not the greatest scoring team in the world. And to come from 2-0 behind might be a problem. It did hit the bar. Sweet fired it in and it was deflected off a defender. The goalkeeper then had no chance. It is now Dundee United 0, Livingston 2. If we just defend well now, we will win this game. We need to make sure we just defend well. And as you can see, we're not going to press them. We're letting them have the ball. <laughs> and this tactic seems to have worked. Let's play a low block. We've forced them to come out. And we're not pressing them. So you've got to come out, bring the ball out. And it's created space for us. And here is Omienga. And that was close. That was so close to making it 3-0. And we are in complete control of this game now. And it may be that we're going to create many, many more chances because Dundee United are going to have to come out, change their game plan and look to try to get back into this game. We just need to keep doing what we're doing. And... That's what I'm going to say to them. We've had a lot of shots on target. Just keep going, keep doing what you're doing, and we will win this game. And we obviously are the better side. I think the temptation is always to go attacking and to try with high press and pressure them. But it's not always the best way to win the game. And here is Sweet. Sweet Pines Penrice. Penrice. We are playing the ball around nicely now. And here... Is a chance and Ben fires it over the crossbar. I'm going to have a look. Are they being asked to play? I'm going to ask them to be more disciplined because I don't think the players are particularly listening to me at the moment and they need to listen to what the game plan is all about a little bit more and just take their time, be more patient and we will score goals. And I sometimes think because they don't listen, that's why we're not. We're not actually scoring goals, but it is Dundee United. They do have their foot on the ball. I need to check that they're still playing. Oh, and that's a lovely ball through, and Dundee United have scored. And I got a funny feeling he might have been offside. Was he offside? No, he wasn't. And it was a really good ball. It was fired through the middle. It was... Wow, that was a good ball. It was absolutely fired through the middle. We couldn't do anything about that. But we need to do better than this. This is not acceptable. This is a bottom of the league team again. And I can't believe how difficult we find it to beat bottom of the league teams. And here they come again and they are coming at us. And it is Wilson powering his way. And that we are in trouble now because that looks like a sending off offence to me. And Moylan has got himself in trouble. He's probably going to be sent off here. And this is big trouble now. And what we need to do is... Oh, I don't know what we need to do. <laughs> this is big trouble now. And I just I think I'm going to bring... Can Nubel play there? No, he can't. We'll just leave Nubel where he is. I'm going to drop Anderson down to a pressing forward on defend. And we'll try and play the ball down the right hand side and then what we'll do is we'll just drop it down one we don't want to drop it down too much and maybe we'll make some changes and so it really is just a case of holding on now trying to protect that lead and we have been put in a lot of trouble by Nuble and it, Dundee do have a free kick and I'm going to go to defensive now just try and hold on just try and hold on boys let's see if we just like two more minutes and the time is up yes time it is full time we have held on and we have beaten Dundee United by two goals to one it is a problem that Nuble has been at uh, Malan has been sent off because it will affect how we line up in the next game. But we'll deal with that <laughs> as and when necessary. But we have beaten them. And let's have a look at what Rangers did. Celtic, of course, won. Rangers beat Aberdeen by a goal to nil. It's all very tight there at the top. And we will continue on our journey. And the next game that we will have will be at Hearts at Home. And so I will just play out the week. And then we will come back for the Hearts game. We will see you very soon. 
So not only has Moylan's sending off given us a big problem, but we now have another major injury and we have lost both fullbacks on the left and right. Both first team fullbacks are now out and Penris has got injured. He's going to be out for around about three weeks and he's joining Devlin, who's still going to be out for around about two weeks. So I only have two fullbacks that I can count on and we are in big problems. The other piece of news was that of course McKinnon did make his debut in the last game and I don't think he did all that bad bless him and he did made 18 passes completed 14 of them and made one tackle in an average rating of 6.6 so that's not too bad and he didn't make such a bad start after all so maybe it's not a bad thing to have him on the bench and of course he can play at right back in an emergency and so it's useful to have him on the bench while we have all these injuries as well to contend with we barely can put a bench together in fact we can't put a bench together we only have eight on the bench rather than nine at the moment it really is difficult managing teams in Scotland and so now we have to go and play against Hearts and this is going to be a really big test for this much reduced squad and this very tired squad at the moment. So let's go and kick some balls. And so today's team is Bentley in goal and he needs to shape up a bit because he's been a little bit out of form of late. And Ben, Akinola, Boyle and Beck at the back. Omeonga, Sweet and Bowden in midfield. Nuble, Henderson and Anderson will play up front. And I have listened to the team, I think, because I have noticed that they are putting their foot on the ball. They are not playing in a very direct style. And that has kind of made me think, I wonder if it's tiredness. And I wonder if we need to slow the game down now, concentrate on just maintaining possession. And that's what I've asked them to do. I've asked them to play a lot less direct. We're going to play shorter, try and maintain possession and try and win the game that way. I do know hearts have rotated quite a lot, so we might still be in with a chance here as we do have a corner and it's headed across with a bar by Boyle. And what a chance that was. What a start. We are dangerous, of course, from set pieces. We're leading the league by a million miles in goals from set pieces, especially corners. We do have a free kick and here is Anderson over the ball. And there's another Another header that just goes over the bar. We're in control of the game. Hearts have barely had a kick, and but we haven't actually scored. And that's the what wins football matches. And we need to score goals. And as we're coming up, it looks like towards half time, it's 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 nothing's happening. It's still nil nil. We've dominated the match, but I'll take a draw from this because with the squad that I have at the moment they're very tired we are struggling for form and we just need to hold on get a point and from today I will take four points from six that will be a good result for today given the injuries we have given how tired they all are just to get four points from six would be wonderful. We are in charge of the game. Hearts are not really in it, but they're always going to be dangerous. And if you don't score, the opposition could always come and take the ball off you. And with one shot, they could win the match. But here's Bowden. Bowden's looking for Nuble. Nuble is tackled, but he holds on to possession. Can he get it into the box? We have men in the box. And there's a long cross looking to the far post. It is a chance for Henderson. And it's gone wide somehow I thought that had gone in I really thought it had gone in and Henderson like me is checking the side netting there to see whether it actually had gone in and we do have a corner and it's into the box there is a header at the near post and it is saved it's still nil nil and we're holding our own we're doing well for a team that has been decimated of late I'll take a nil nil here any day of the week but I do maybe now need to think about making some changes. We're starting to get some very tired bodies out there. And for now, we've made just one change. And isn't it strange when you only have one fullback left that he has a really poor game? And he, we've had to bring McKinnon on at fullback. And there's a cross into the box. It's headed on. Do we have a chance here? And it's gone in. No, it hasn't. It's been cleared off the line. That's so unlucky. We deserve to be winning this game. 
and that's just so unlucky. Hearts have really not been in this game. They, when they've rotated, their second team is not good enough to live with us. And here's Sweet. Sweet to Omienga. Omienga looking for Nubel outside, but Nubel's first touch lets him down, and it's back to the goalkeeper. They are playing dangerously in their own penalty area there, we, and we have won the second ball from the clearance. A lovely turn by Beck. Beck, though, is tackled, but he maintains possession. Now look inside. Don't do it all yourself. And that's a good ball to Nubel. Nubel looking inside. And that's a poor pass. And we have lost possession. And here come Hearts. Is this their one counter-attack where they score? And there's a shot. And it has gone in. And Hearts have scored. It was coming. It's If you don't score, then you are going to... You are going to lose the match. And that's their only shot, I think, that we've seen... Although they have other shots, but not highlights. And the first time they've had the ball, they've scored. <laughs> and I don't know what my goalkeeper's doing there. He's way out of position. And that's just unbelievable that that's happened. I'm not too happy. Uh, but we do have a corner. We're still in this. We've gone attacking. We have to attack now. And it's just so bad. And after this highlight, I'll go and make some more changes. But here's Beck. Beck, can he find someone? He's looking for Nubler. Nubler over the top. But again, it's a poor pass. In the final third, our passing has not been very good. And it's not found its target. We've been good in midfield, dominating possession. And here is a chance. And Anderson is in. And Anderson can't score either. But he was offside. Let's make some changes. And so we've made our final changes. And just can we get a point out of this? It, this would be so rotten luck. It would be so bad if we've just dominated this match and we can't get a point even out of this. It's just a, a heartbreak, really. We've played as, about as well as we can. And here's a long ball by Hearts. And they are looking forward to, to get it forward again. But it's cut out. And McKinnon. McKinnon's been robbed. And there is the quality of McKinnon shining through. Another chance. And it goes over the bar. And uh, yeah, you can see McKinnon's quality there. But that's all we can afford to buy. And we are in big, big trouble. And we have lost this match. And I'm not very happy. We've dropped down to third. And uh, that was just bad luck. Um... We were on top and we just couldn't score. And Anderson has to take a lot of the blame. If you have forwards out there and they go through these patches where they don't score, then you're not going to win matches. Unfortunately, it wasn't our day today. And we have lost ground. And things are not looking good. In terms of the squad and what's happening, things are not looking very good at all. I want to get out of the Scottish Cup. I don't need to be in that competition. We have enough problems uh, without clogging up our schedule and making things worse for ourselves. We're in a period of poor form and we need to somehow get out of this. I don't know how we're going to do it yet. We need our injured players back as soon as we possibly can. But that's it for this episode. If you are new to the channel and you like FM content, why not subscribe, like, watch and comment. Help the channel to grow and help us to support all that good stuff that you can see scrolling above. And while you're at it, you can watch me suffer as well because at the moment I am feeling like I'm suffering big time here. And all that remains to be said for now is take care, everybody, and we will see you in the next episode.